One Saturday morning, I lay on my back in the garden and pretended I'd fallen off a ladder so that I could get out of a family trip to Ikea. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> what, what, what had you been supposedly doing on the ladder to fall I'm, off it? So, my wife said, we're going to Ikea, and then you should be upset if I said no. So I said, yeah, no problems. Can we go in about an hour? She said, yeah, no problems. Why? And I said, because I've got to do something in the garden. Yeah, what what, right, what did were you, you doing? Trimming the tree. You, so you said, OK, we can go to Ikea in an hour, I've yeah. just got to go and trim the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I'm going to trim the tree, obviously. I said, I've just got something to do in the garden. Why is it so urgent that this tree needed to be trimmed? You're not following this story, are you, Sean? <laughs> I didn't need to trim the tree. Yeah, 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 but surely wouldn't she go, we'll do it later? Because it was a casual conversation. We're going to Ikea. Can we go in about an hour? I've just got to do something in the garden. She went, yeah, fine. And that was it. Right. We don't live in a relationship where I go, can we go to Ikea? And I go, can we go now? I'm doing something in the garden. She doesn't sit me down, put a spotlight on me, <laughs> and go, I'm just a sing in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> OK. But you did talk Perry last week! <laughs> so she... She's, you say you've got to do something in the garden. She says, fine. So you walk out into the garden. Yes. Go explain to the shed. how you set the scene. I go to the shed, yeah. right? Yeah. I pick my tool wisely, because I, <laughs> I want to make sure that when, I, when I've fallen with it, that yeah. it looks dramatic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So what did you Bit pick? of secateurs, nothing. Those big, giant ones. Do you know which one I mean? They look like those old-fashioned bull workers, but they've got a pair of scissors at the end. Yeah. And the telescopic handles. That's one. I still needed a ladder. So you're not going to get me on that. Did you climb to the top of this ladder? Uh, well, do you actually... I don't need to, do I? There's no, no. trimming what? to so no. be done. I mean, <laughs> are you fucking... <laughs> <okay? laughs> <laughs> There's no... I'm not, so... I'm not Robert De Niro, I'm not Method. I didn't have to go, <laughs> I must become the tree trimmer. <laughs> Your wife must think you're pretty bad at it if you can go out and presumably instantly fall I off the ladder. I didn't say I fell off instantly. I know she's going off to do something well, else. Well, she notice. says, I'm going to the shops then. So I know she's out, so I position everything. So she, she says, in advance of going to this shop, she is going to the shop. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an expression that people say, I'm just popping to the shops. I pop into the individual shop. No, it's not shop. an expression. It means going <laughs> to the shop. <laughs> no, it doesn't. What, is it a euphemism in your house for what? <laughs> Having a poo. <laughs> I'm popping to the shop. Oh, so. Look, you get me on one letter, or I pop into the shop. <laughs> she said she was popping to the shop now. Shop singular in advance of your trip to the shop. She I'm might not... have said shop. It's one letter. Give me a break. It's series nine. <laughs> she may have said shop. Can I ask or shop. I'm just popping out. In fact, she said out. I'm popping out. She's popping. She was out. popping out. So. <laughs> OK, so she has left the house. She's left the house. So She's you gone know to you've the got... Yeah. <laughs> to, buy, to buy a curly whirly or curly whirlies, I'm not sure. <laughs> She's gone out. I know she's going to be gone enough time for me to get a ladder, lie it on its side, do the second turn and lie there in the position that I would describe as Can I ask injured. this question? Why didn't you want to go to Ikea? <laughs> <laughs> I think I go to Ikea to get out of trimming a tree. <laughs> I didn't need to trim the tree! <laughs> so your wife comes back from the shop before going to the shop, yeah. for whatever reason. And we find that, weirdly, that the, the different shops sell different things. Okay. So I have tried the old one. She goes, I'm just going to buy some potatoes. I've gone, why don't we wait till we're in Ikea? She said, no, you can't buy... As it turns out that different shops sell different things. <laughs> So your wife comes back from the potato shop to find... No, it's find not called the potato shop. You've finished trimming the tree and yeah. fallen off a ladder. Yes. How much of the tree did you get done? <laughs> <laughs> did you claim specific injuries that you'd done? When you yes. said, oh, I've just generally hurt myself, what? What had you done? What I did went, you say it hurt? I went, ah! My leg! She went, what's up with it? I said, I don't know, but I can't go to Ikea. <laughs> And I claim to have injured my coccyx. How long had she been gone? <laughs> it was probably four or five days this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably about ooh, 15 to 20 minutes. Did she still go to Ikea? Yeah, no, what did, yes, what did she do then? You, you're she, there she, in she, agony. She came to help me. She helped you up. She helped me up. She, she tried to get me stood up. I, I held the base of my back. Is that with the coccyx in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I held the base of my back. Uh -uh. Yeah. And uh, she, she said, you better come inside and sit yourself down. I said, but what about the trip to Ikea? I feel I've let you down. She said, no, that was years ago. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think the bit where I was pushing it, when I shouted, love, can you, can you pull that ladder away? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to go rusty, I might need that in a couple of weeks when we go to Boots. <laughs> <laughs>
So what do you think, David? Is this true? Um, what do you think? I think it's a lie. I just think you'd it, save it, that for something a bit more... You think it's a waste? A bit more, well, yeah. yeah, it's a waste of uh, an opportunity to get out of something. <laughs> like a, like a family dad's... Christmas, you could get out of a whole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? <laughs> I, think, I think we think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Lee, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell's <laughs> uh, Was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was done out of ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop where, near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box for two and six of Standard Fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard Fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be endeavoured. <laughs> yeah. For a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says Standard, but yeah. then it's... <laughs> Well, that is standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home, yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven, and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was late, what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparklers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which, at that age, makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're OK. Could you just not read the word not when you were born? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh, lovely, I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> <laughs> no, that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, I've they're discovered just... they're not suitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. <laughs> if you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's, so, it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, on the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So, what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks, now beginning to light, into the kitchen, and I threw them into the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? it because is. of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... And there's more... It's more wiped down... Yes. yes. ...less cloth. <laughs> so, so what happened then? They went off in the, um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing, wee? <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, can't, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me... Yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I out to the bingo. <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. The kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum said, don't go out. <laughs> At least one oh. rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid afternoon. Oh dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who put right. the fire out? I went to next door where Miss Best lived. She was about, bless her, she was about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, My house is on fire. And she said, Do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> 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 so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses. Throughout the house, yes, ruining it. even the rooms Ru where there's not no ruining, fire. Not, not ruining it. Yeah, you do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Oh. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the house. Which, Is it not yeah, the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out. <laughs> Honestly, the yeah. entire house. That's it. I was in a I was in a family of four children, and we had, we were homeless. Where, where... <laughs> oh, keep it light. 
No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three? They were looking after fireworks you? in other people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> So when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. Entire it's house what, the gone. Whole, house whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt whole house down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? Yeah. I tell Not you, really. they had, well, I think you were stupid. They for had a sparkler <laughs> indoors. <laughs> if you don't know what you dropped. Yeah. In the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. <laughs> that it might not have been your fault. <laughs> That's what I said to the press. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> press? Who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning. Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on, trilbies, <laughs> sniffing around. <laughs> <laughs> With those little bits of paper in the. <laughs> Yeah. Were they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was called Ron Waffle. <laughs> Sorry, Ron so, Waffle? It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. It was one of them two. <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I, was, I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> caramel and waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point, he's seen a film in which this has happened. He saw backdrop. And is now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Sarah. I, oh, I sort of... I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> I think I don't. I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. I once undertook a self-help course entitled How to Become Taller. <laughs> <laughs> very, very hurtful, that laughter, I thought, Ronnie. Very well, cool. <laughs> was it a step-by-step -step guide? It was. <laughs> Um, no, it was um, a little routine I had to perform every morning uh, against the wall, stretching up, and with a pin in the wall. Oh, it was literally taller, not just to make you feel Oh, no, to confident. really make me This is going to make you taller. I'm talking about the real business, making me taller, and saying every day, every day and in every way, I'm getting taller and taller. Can I ask you a question? Did you keep the receipt? <laughs> <laughs> Was well, this done once you were of maturity, or was it when you were an adolescent and still possibly might grow? Uh, I was about sort of 14 or 15. Oh, yes, right. And it was bought by my aunt, right. who was perhaps more worried about my size than I was. Yeah. And uh, so she subscribed to it. How, how tall were you at 14? Um, a little bit <laughs> taller than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great book you bought. <laughs> Surely, at 15, you can still have a growth spurt. Like, Julian, you're pretty tall. Like, how old were you when you reached the height you are now? Um, well, I shot up when I was 15. <laughs> were you doing this at the same time? No. <laughs> um, when were, you, were, you, were you older than 15 when you were... I was about 18, I suppose. So, so I... to worry about your your nephew not being tall at 14 or 15, that's quite premature to get concerned about... Someone's height. But boys do in, usually shoot up at about 14 or 15, don't they? No, I never shot up. I, my, <laughs> my parents kept telling me about my cousin Gethin, who he always shot up when he was 22, he got ages yet. Uh, and yes. it was I like, peaked at a very disappointing five foot seven, which is. I can't believe in front of Ronnie you're saying a very disappointing five foot seven. I was about to say. It's <laughs> his feelings! His feelings! Hello. <laughs> so upsetting. <laughs> get out of short trousers into long trousers. Oh, what time is it now? No. Um, <laughs> so what do you think? Is, is, Ronnie, uh, is Ronnie telling the truth? 
in the context of what was that, the, the 40s when you were a teenager? Uh, the 1944, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 42, yeah. 41, 42. Sort of thing I don't people think might you have, have money to, to spend on self help books. Well, during the war, they're not going to spend time worrying about how tall people are. Well, well that, you that's exactly, exactly, the exactly, when, exactly when you worry yeah. about when yeah. we need to be taller than the enemy. <laughs> 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 You grow an extra six inches, sent you in the wall, got in the trench, and your head was sticking out. Of the top. <laughs> <laughs> it was very annoying, wasn't it? Now, you've got to get a grip here, Lee, and uh, make a decision. I think we should go for. You're saying truth. Holly, how sure are you? I'm definitely sure you're not. That's not true. It's... I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. You, you've answered the question, sweetheart. I'll go with you, Ian. OK, you're saying it's true. <laughs> so, Ronnie Corbett, is it the truth or were you telling a lie? It is the truth. <laughs> 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 Uh, Ronnie did once undertake a self-help course entitled How to Become Taller. Of course, lacking height is no obstacle to success. I can think of loads of short people who've become household names. There's Ronnie, of course, and then there's Sleepy, Grumpy, <laughs> Happy, <laughs> Dozy, Sneezy, Ant and Deck. <laughs> when I worked in a shoe shop, my boss was called Mr Clog. <laughs> Remarkably, I've had three other jobs where my boss's name was directly related to their profession. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What? The obvious question to ask is, uh, what were those jobs mm. and what were these uh, people's names? Yeah, it is an obvious question. Is it maybe too obvious a question? Maybe go somewhere else first, just... <laughs> I want to know about the first. Just tell us one of the jobs. At school, I worked in a warehouse and the boss was called Mr Foreman. Mr. Foreman. <laughs> okay. And what was your job? My bit. Getting stuffed stuff. down from the top shelf. Yes. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> How would you rate Foreman as, as as a boss? If he was suspicious, would he grill you? Foreman. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Why did you have so many jobs? Did you keep getting sacked? <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> What were the other two jobs? Yeah, what were the other jobs? Uh, I worked in... Do you remember the predecessor to Iceland, which was B-Jam? Yeah. My supervisor was called John Frost. Frost, <laughs> B-Jam. <laughs> you can see why B-Jam didn't last, cos people will go, why don't they just call it honey? <laughs> <laughs> Your final job was? Uh, well, it was my first ever job in television. Right. And that was? Uh, it was... Well, it was a researcher on a computer games programme. OK, and your, your, your boss, boss is... was called? My boss was called Tony Verrill. What does, what, what does Verrill mean That's in relation to... What do you mean? It's a surname, but his initials were TV. <laughs> of all these bosses that you remember, Richard, who, uh, who would you say was your favourite boss? What was it about that boss that made them? So well, adorable. John Frost wasn't really my boss, I, so I liked him. We had a bit more of a, uh, a, bit more of a relationship. Uh, Mr Foreman, I found that was quite stressful, because it was one of my first ever jobs. Uh, and Tony Verrill still works in the industry, so I, I, I will not be passing comments. Tony Verrill still works, works in, the in the industry. I've never come across him. Yeah, I've not come what across Tony What have you come across him, David? Um, yeah, I think I've worked with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Verrill. Sure. Not 100%, <laughs> but... Do you know who Tony Verrill is? I've no. Tony Verrill? No, never heard of him. Who, it's weird that, that all, none of us three have heard of Tony Verrill, and yet all you three have heard of Tony Verrill. <laughs> Catherine hasn't. Catherine hasn't. Catherine has or hasn't? I haven't, but it rings a bell. Oh, so you... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Truth what or lie? Think? Truth or lie? Well, the thing is, I think you're almost certainly sort of geeky enough to keep a record of that sort of thing, and it's the type of thing that would amuse you and you'd remember at the time. On the other hand, it's also the type of thing that you could quickly construct to be clever. It's a challenging one. What do you think? A lie? Mm, yes, I think so. We'll have to say lie. You say lie. OK. Just because of Tony Vowell. Richard, truth or lie? It is... a lie. <laughs> I was so sure that Wombles were real, I used one as an example of a mammal in a GCSE biology exam. <laughs> How could it be true, Lee? <laughs> but which one did you draw? What did he look like? I didn't draw anything that wasn't in the question. Okay, you you took him in the was given an example of a mammal. Oh, you used it, just wrote it down. I gave, I gave... It was give three examples of mammals, and I said bear, because 
that's an obvious one. Yeah. Whale, a bit less obvious, yeah. clever. And Womble was my third example. How old, how old, old were you at the time? Uh, uh, 15. What are you looking at David for? Let's <laughs> 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 remind ourselves what the Wombles looked like. Uh, we've got Uncle Bulgaria. Yeah? <laughs> he was like the Don Corleone of the, uh, <laughs> of the Womble family. What grade did you get then? A. You got A's, even though you think Womble's a mammal. I should, I should make it clear that I didn't think the children's programme was a documentary. <laughs> I thought the children's programme, that Womble, was based on a real mammal. So for, ex for example, a bear is a real mammal, but, but, but Yogi is Bear isn't the fair representation. <laughs> You're telling me for a GCSE at age 15, the question was give three examples of a mammal. Look, <laughs> this isn't the end of a game show. It's not like and this one's for the GCSE. <laughs> But surely the question in you know, a GCSE at 50 wouldn't be give us an example of three mammals. It's a bit of a basic question. What? Why do you think that is so easy? Well, it's quite, it's quite you are such an intellectual snob. Because... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my role on the show. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you could have said cat, dog. That's what. Any number are you, are of you things... stuck for the third one? <laughs> 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 cat, dog. <laughs> So you could say that you knew that they were fictional, but, but based on a real yes. animal called the Womble. I thought that maybe it was based on the fact that in yeah. real life they made their burrows from, like, condoms oh, and... Yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> reality, of course, most creatures perish because of litter, things that the everyday folk leave behind. <laughs> so, in a way, the Wombles did a lot of bad. Are you saying that the Wombles' they, message they encouraged exist. people to litter? Yes. And people sort of said, well, maybe I was going to throw this away properly, but maybe the Wombles can make an extension out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, people do dress dogs up like that these days, and so you, you couldn't be sure. Well, they're, they're possibly just trained uh, Wombles. Yeah. <laughs> but these, in the, in the story, the Wombles were... That wasn't just poor old bewildered Womble, but someone's put some glasses on him. Mm. He's put his own glasses. He's gone to the Womble optician <laughs> and said, could you fashion me some reading glasses out of some stuff that the everyday folk have left around? And, and they've done that. Right. That, that's actually not true. He found the glasses. He found, he found, he found the found, He found glasses of exactly the right prescription. <laughs> no, no, possibly. <laughs> on Wimbledon Common. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately the Wombles are on him. <laughs> Taking everything. He's his medals, his gold watch, his glasses, his shoes, and there he is naked. <laughs> it's all about no dignity. No dignity if the Wombles are around. It's a brilliant programme. <laughs> What do we think, Bill? I think it would be an in insult to Catherine's intelligence to believe that she wrote that down in an exam. I don't believe it. You don't? You see, I think... Go on, what do you think, Lou? No, I don't believe it. Why? No. Because I don't, because I think that she seems better educated than that. I mean, I got kicked out of school at 15 and... Why? Because I wasn't very educated and I didn't really know anything. I couldn't spell or read. I was doing high kicks and back flips all the time. They got bored of me. <laughs> what did you do when you were expelled? Did you just run out into the street yeah. singing and dancing yeah. and going, yeah. I don't need this? Yeah. Yeah. I don't need this, I don't want this, I can spell, I can do what? Head roll, head roll, head roll. <laughs> boom, boom. I would say that in the history of this programme, we have never had two <laughs> such opposing... ...as <laughs> Bill and Luke. Well, there we are. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's time, Lee, to time. Uh, make a decision. Which way are you going to go, Lee? OK, well, I'll go with my team and say that it's not You're true. Even though my lie. gut is screaming it's true, I will go with my team and say it's a lie. OK. Catherine, is it a lie or is it true? It is, in fact, true. Oh. <laughs> It's David. I once hired a jet ski, but... <laughs> Lie. <Forget it. laughs> we need to hear no more, David. <laughs> I once hired a jet ski, but couldn't work out how to stop it, so had to buzz around the bay for 50 minutes until it ran out of petrol. <laughs> I take it back, I, yeah. you did. I can <laughs> so imagine you doing that. Please, Absolutely. Team. So where was this? It was in Antigua. 
in Antigua. Was this in your Roy single lads days? He never had those days. <laughs> <Yeah. All right. laughs> it's your first time on the show, isn't it? It is. <laughs> no, Why were you in Antigua? On holiday. Was the Winchester Steam Museum shut? <laughs> Why yes, was yes I, I, I arrived at the Winchester Steam Museum and it was shut, and so I went straight to Antigua. <laughs> <laughs> when was and, this? Uh, I think about two years ago. And um, who were you with? My uh, wife. And what got into your head? I could imagine you renting a sun lounger and opening up uh, a weighty tome. I, I could imagine that. But I can't see you saying, now you relax here, yeah? I'm just going to go <laughs> and bomb around the bay for a while. <laughs> Were you with your wife on the jet skis or did she stay on, the, on dry land? Uh, she stayed on dry land. So you were on your own going round? Yeah, you yeah. weren't with other people? And it was you. your idea? I just... I, look, I thought I'd have a bit of a go. What were you wearing, David? Uh, uh, sort of swimming shorts. What length were the shorts? Were they sort of Daniel Craig? <laughs> or, uh... so they weren't as long as Daniel Craig. <laughs> <laughs> what do you wear? Like shorts. I said swimming shorts. They've got a pocket. Wow. They've got a pocket. <laughs> Got a oh, pocket and they've got netting on the inside <laughs> to keep everything in order. <laughs> All right. Then. You jump on, you're looking back at your wife. Ah, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not like, ah, look at me at all, because I must say, as soon as I get going, it becomes immediately apparent to me that I don't like it. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, here's a big question, then. Mm. You did it until the petrol ran out, did you say? Yeah. So, did you manage to time perfectly that the petrol had run out just as you got to back to the jetty? No. So you were stuck now in the middle of the sea? Yeah. I didn't... What I didn't do is head straight out away from the coast. <laughs> the point where my plan formed, I thought, I'll just go up and down quite near the jetty, thinking I'll, I'll be able to swim to the jetty if the worst comes to the worst. So what I happened then? You just it. kept going, kept going, and then eventually it coughed and spluttered. Yeah. Talk us through. Well, I kept going, I kept going, and then eventually it coughed and spluttered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lee, what are you going to say? What do we think? I... You have a great physique. <laughs> Thank you. You've got to warn me before you say things like this. <laughs> a great physique for what? For maybe, I don't know, a game of billiards. <laughs> or Cluedo. Yeah. And I don't quite think that jet skiing is completely your thing. I agree. <laughs> I don't even think he has ever been to Antigua. <laughs> so you're saying lie, you're saying lie. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? I'll go with the team. David, truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. I once lost Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because I was chatting up a parking attendant. <laughs> well, David and team. A lot of factors there. Lot of factors. Why were you in possession of Julian Lloyd Webber's cello? Because he had lent it to me. <laughs> um... <laughs> Why would he lend you his cello? Well, not exactly lend. You I was it. kind of I was kind of looking after it. Where were you, Alex? I was in Manchester. Right. Yeah. And was he playing? Was he doing a gig or something? He was doing... Yeah, he was, like, with an orchestra, but he had, an own, he had his own solo part, so he played... That I know, bit. an orchestra, they all have... They have an instrument each, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah, but David, he had a special part. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. But he, for which he didn't need his cello, it was... Uh, <laughs> He asked you to hold the cello this was before. and go and check on the parking scenario <laughs> in the middle of the symphony. This was before. Before the concert. OK. Mm. So did you know him? I hadn't met him before. No. But what was the great attraction of the parking attendant? Very handsome, very fit. It was very hot. How did you tell him a big hat like that in his jacket up He there? didn't have a hat on. They were, they were very modern parking attendants. Well, he didn't have a hat on. I think we need to analyse this story chronologically. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start again. Now, it is the day of the concert. Right. Yes. <laughs> Dawn <Nice>. breaks. <laughs> right. Where are you and where is Julian Lloyd Webber? <laughs> Julian Lloyd Webber and I are both in Manchester. When did you meet? In the car park. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Said like a true Welsh girl. No, thank, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm afraid the car park is not an acceptable answer to the question, right. when did you meet? Right. Because the car park is a place, not a time. <laughs> Let me set the scene. OK. So, I'm in the car park yeah. with the car park attendant. Of course right. you are. But yeah. The okay. car park attendant is just there. He hasn't got a hat on. He's not that official. But he's just generally hanging around the car park all sexy. He's just hanging out. Yeah. What's he wearing at the time? Has he got anything on? Is he, is he naked? <laughs> And a t-shirt. Jeans and a t-shirt? This is just jacket. some guy. Some bloke. He's, he's told you he's on. a car park attendant because no. he wants to sound important. Yeah. Is that important? Yeah, it's the sexiest <laughs> thing you can say. Everyone knows that. Julian Lloyd Webber yeah. walks in with walks his cello. In with his right. cello. Which weighs about four tonnes. No, they're not that heavy. Well, no. no, no, no they're no. not that heavy. No, and for no. someone like Julian, who's probably got a bit of sinew and bicep because of all his playing, mm. it would be very light. <laughs> yeah. It's that's not, it's not that's how they heavy. pick cellists, isn't it? They yes. pick the ones that can carry it. They can, <laughs> you, can, you can teach anyone to play it, but it's the carrying it that's exactly. the trick. Exactly. He pitches up. He's on his phone. Yeah. Oh, He's while the carrying the cello. The cello. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> Were you trying to get off with the car park man because you wanted to not pay for your own parking? It's difficult to know if you're a car park attendant whether any relationship you're in is genuine. <laughs> whether they're, is exactly. it me or is it just for is the it, free parking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did he just hand the cello to you with a yes. nod like that while he was on the understanding no, that you would know what he meant? No, he'd put it down on his side and then just went. <laughs> what happens then? Yes, this is crucial. Then Julian comes off the phone, taps me on the shoulder. Where's my cello? I look round, cello gone. <gasps> oh! Uh, what? No! It was the car parking attendant. <laughs> Who took the cello then? The cello yeah? had made its way into the concert hall. Of course on its own. On its own. <laughs> <laughs> the very best cellos can do that, can't they? <laughs> well, somebody has taken the cello, gone into the concert hall with the cello, Julian and me flummoxed. Flummoxed? So, so this is not an attempt to steal the cello, this is a do-gooder seeing an unattended cello and thinking, well, I can't leave that lying around. Someone could steal it, I'd better steal it. <laughs> He's a good citizen and thought, that's worth millions, it's on its own, I'll take it in. Why were you at this concert? What was your ostensible role? I was a runner researcher, so I was working on a television programme that they were making. That's new information. You didn't say that. I'm suddenly yeah, coming round to I Julian's know. point of view. So what do you think, David? What are you going to say? It's utter, utter nonsense. You think it's nonsense? I'm going to say she's lying. Li you both think she's lying. she's lying. Yeah. She's lying. Well, I heart. certainly. I say I think it's true. Do you? But not enough to overrule. I, I haven't. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Because uh, now you. Well, no, I, it's a very rarely that I overrule. <laughs> At the <laughs> moment, I believe in democracy. Yeah. But if we, if it turns out you guys are wrong, I may lose my belief in democracy, and this could become a police state. <laughs> So your answer is? We're going to say it's a lie. Saying it's a lie. Right. <sighs> Alex Actually, Jones. no, we're going to say it's true. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, it's police state time. time. Oh, we're going to oh, say it's oh, true. Oh, oh. I like that. I, I like that. I find that arousing. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> truth or lie? Rob, you should have to take the first answer on this programme. It's true. No! No! Yes, it's true. Uh, Alex did lose Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because she was chatting up a parking attendant. It's a possession. All right, OK, there's a box under the desk. Now, if you could, first of all, read the card out that's in the box... All right. ..and then take out the possession and pop it on the desk. Last year, on a visit to the zoo... <laughs> 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 Been to a zoo, you know what I mean? <laughs> Last year on a visit to the zoo, I put on a mask so that no one recognised me. This is that mask. But no need to be quite so aggressive. <laughs> Could you put it on your face, please? Yeah, no, I'll whack it on you, of course. Yeah. Yeah, let me have a look. <laughs> now, can I just hear you say, 
Two ice creams, please. <laughs> uh, can I get a couple of ice creams? <laughs> Asking, but aren't you Danny Dyer? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now. Can I, uh, can I take it off? Now? Yes, of course, yeah. you can. <laughs> of course you can. So, where did you get that mask from? Huh? You were, don't buy it? for time. I'm not buying for time. <laughs> no, I bought it at the zoo, didn't I? Well, where do you think I bought it? Look at it. <laughs> so, did you plan before you went to the zoo not to be recognised? That was always part no, of the No, you never know, really. You go out with your kids and that, you know. And, and then when uh, you got to the zoo, you decided to. Well, it was on me. And, uh, what was on you? <laughs> Like people. People were on you. Not on me. No, but I mean on, giving you the. Drive me mad. Yeah. Right. Nice people. It's all sort of love and all that. But I needed to uh, do something about it because you know, me little was getting the hump. You know, I was trying to look at the, you know, the the giraffes. Is drugged up giraffe. The giraffe didn't look well to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've been around the zoo a bit. You're getting a bit of grief. You've had enough. You go to the gift shop. Any reason why you chose a child's one? Because it looks very small on your head. That night. <laughs> Um, it was just the first one I picked up. I needed to get one on Lively. I actually bought it, you know, with it on. Do you know what I mean? I, I whacked it on. You didn't even want the person selling you it to recognise it. <laughs> no. did, did you not scream and say, that there's, we've got an escapee? <laughs> Danny, where is this zoo? Um, it, I can't, I, it's, it's round the corner of me. It's, it's in Essex. It's, uh, it's only a little, little number. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a couple of rabbits in there. I mean, you know... Uh... <laughs> did you go and see the zebras? Uh, it didn't have any. Not a zebra about them. Well, you say that, you surely weren't wearing a Danny Dyer mask. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one. <laughs> was one. I was disappointed, I ain't gonna lie. Felt bad for her, you know, I've yeah. took her out on a day out and, uh, and I've yeah. took her to a moody zoo. I mean, it wasn't... A moody zoo? A moody zoo, you know, I've really promised her, I said, listen, bud, me and you are gonna go out and have a lovely day and I've okay. took her to see a couple of rabbits and a moody giraffe, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, in general, you know, it was a bit of a letdown. Do you mind just one more time placing yeah, that? Yeah, I'd love to put it on. Love to. <laughs> it's it's the, very um... small. I reckon that I could recognise you from the voice and what's yeah. showing on the face. Yeah. Mm. Was this uh, before you were on EastEnders or afterwards? Uh, this was before. So you weren't being mobbed loads? Well, I'm still getting it a bit, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> a, lot of my, uh, a lot of my fans... Can I take this off again now? I wish you would, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a little disturbed. No, no, you know, a lot of my fans ain't hating zoos, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... So what do we think, Maura? I think he is so cool that he can do other things rather than wear a zebra mask. To, to stop to the attention? People, yes. In, like what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> saying, hey, no. <laughs> I think you can get... <laughs> so, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, if so... <laughs> Is that what you do when people ask for photos? <laughs> Excuse me, are you Moira Stewart? <laughs> or oh, no. <laughs> so, what's so, it going to be, So, Lee? Moira says it's a lie. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably sure. a lie. You say oh, lie, OK. Mm. Yeah, a lie, yeah, a lie. I'll go with my team and say lie, then. You're going to say lie? OK. Danny, truth or lie? It's the truth. Oh. Wow! <laughs> yes, it's true. Danny did wear a mask, so he wouldn't be recognised at the zoo. <clears throat> it's Lee. When I was seven, I had to be a bridesmaid at my auntie's wedding. <laughs> When I was seven, I had to be a bridesmaid at my auntie's wedding, as one of the girls who was supposed to do it was ill, and the dress was a perfect fit. <laughs> what did the dress look like? Um, I describe the colour as traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they have to have a bridesmaid? Why couldn't they just say, if she's not well, let's move on? Uh, I think you mix me up with admin. <laughs> Someone says to me, put the dress on, I'd put it on. You know that, don't you? <laughs> Do as I'm told. So you didn't display any reluctance to put the dress on? I may have said, you know, mother, father, I am a seven-year-old boy, despite the fact that I am two years younger-looking and slightly androgynous. But please, <laughs> give me some dignity. How much and my father to... turned around to me, he said, son, when I was your age, he had a pipe, when I was your age, <laughs> My father asked me to put a dress on, and I put it on, and his father before him, and his father before him. <laughs> you'll put the dress on, and you'll smile. <laughs> was there a page boy as well as bridesmaids at this wedding? I was a mm. page boy once, and if another boy 
had dressed up as a girl, I would have felt it was mm. fair game to I persecute that, him. Well, true, but luckily the page boy came up to me, little Sharon, and he said... <laughs> yeah. He said, he said, tell me about it, you know, you think you've had a rough day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a 24-year-old. <laughs> How much notice did you get? Pardon? How much notice did you get? Quite, quite a few people. So I think, you know, from memory, quite a few people were, oh, oh. No, 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 oh, you no. idiot. How much warning? <laughs> How far in advance? Oh. Oh, everyone thought I was adorable. <laughs> I've got to oh, admit, everyone was I... looking. I was nervous at first, but then I felt like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. How much? How much? How much in advance did they yeah. tell me? Yeah. Um, how much notice? How much notice did they? <laughs> <laughs> That would be embarrassing if this was on television, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I got, uh, I think I got like, I don't know, five hours or something. She was ill at the last minute. And... I just think you would have absolutely refused. At well, that listen, I said, Dad, I don't want to do it. And he went, Listen, I'm not your dad, I'm your mother. <laughs> Your dad. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you have to keep the dress on? At what point in the proceedings? I mean, did you have to wear it right through to the disco and uh, you know? My dad you... says you'll keep it on till the uh, till the music starts. <laughs> da 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 da. Because unfortunately, the cabaret act had cancelled because of illness. <laughs> So what are you thinking, David? Does that uh, sound at all plausible to you? What do you think, Evie? I really want it to be true. Well, then say true. I actually think it could genuinely be the biggest load of drivel I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be true. I don't think it's true. Mm. Lie? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lie. Conclusively, it's a lie. Lee, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get some story, didn't I? Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee wasn't a bridesmaid at his auntie's wedding. I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I don't think this is going to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been had a compulsion to see hypnotists? Well, it started off, I had a fear of heights, and I visited a, a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, I tried hypnosis, and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it, so then I ended up visiting a lot more hi what, hypnotists. What were you getting temporary from it? I, I was getting some relief from it for from, a while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point? Why would you go back? Oh, because then uh, the relief is temporary. So I, I ended up going back and then I ended up getting uh, really uh, addicted to visiting dip different hit What do they do? <laughs> Normally they just put me under for a minute. Put and under then what? Put you water. <laughs> they, they make me, it's serious, they make me lie, <laughs> lie on the ground. So they make you lie on the ground? <laughs> How's that going to cure your fear of fires? That should, surely it, they should make you lie on top of the cupboard. <laughs> Well, I am knocked out during this, and then when I, uh, when I wake up, they put me on top of something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, how many different hypnotists have you seen? I don't know. It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> hundreds of hypnotists? It was costing... Most of my income was going on it. I mean, I would do... Whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis then. <laughs> how long have you been seeing the, the one you've been seeing now for to get, to get you off being seen a hypnotist? Well... This one, about two years now. I mean, um, it, it, so the yeah. man you've been seeing for the last two years has been specifically to s for, for the problem that you want to stop seeing hypnotists. <laughs> not, not for the height thing, anyway. Just, I'm addicted to hypnotists, I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for. Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years. <laughs> we are nearly at, we're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> Do 
they ever touch you in any way? Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. Winched up? <laughs> well, winched up to get, to get the height, so severe then when you come vertigo. around, you're at, you're at a height and you so, think so this you, is normal. When, you, when, you, when he puts you under... Well, this is going back when I had the serious problem. Yeah, but, yeah. But, well, let's go back to that problem that interests me, the winching up. So yeah. he, they, they, they put you out and, and then you're gone. Do you remember being... Do you wake up and go, No, you're gone. You, you put on a sort of Velcro suit at the start <laughs> and then... <laughs> Same. No, it's like you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the uh, <laughs> top of the cupboard. So they winch you up, and then winch you down onto the cupboard. Now I can get down because I've been <laughs> hypnotised. So, but you've been winched up to go on top of the cupboard <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah. So he winches you up, then slightly nudges, <laughs> slightly nudges you over the cupboard and winches you down again. <laughs> why? Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What's the advantage of being on a cupboard over being winched up? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? <laughs> What's the name of the hypnotist you see? Dr. Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> never before, never before. As a You're man. doing really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done it. Seen it. <laughs> You know, when you, you know when you start a sentence and you don't know how it's going to end? <laughs> it's never happened before with just two words, doctor and spank. <laughs> He's German! <laughs> oh, no! He's German, yeah? German. <laughs> it's very emotional. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. I'm really going with you on this one. What do you say? <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. <laughs> it's S P E umlaut. G H N K S. You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, that one ruined it. Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and winched up. <laughs> That's the bit you want to be focusing on, I think. Not the spelling of his surname. Right. So, Lee. I say it's a lie, then. He's saying it's a lie. David O'Doherty, was that fantastic tale the truth, or was it a lie? Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. <laughs> yes, uh... Unsurprisingly, it's a lie. David isn't seeing a hypnotist to cure him of a compulsion to visit hypnotists. Uh, I went to see a hypnotist once. All the time he was saying, look into my eyes. Look in... Sorry, sorry, not hypnotist. Optician. 